No, this is not my latest art piece, but I won't waste this paint, I promise. What this is is an illustration of two different types of artists. The starving artist and the hungry artist. And the only way to go from here to here is by mixing them a little bit at a time. Hi, I'm Dave. And I make weird stuff like this. Dr. Angela Duckworth is a former teacher and psychologist and she has studied how kids learn. What she has found out to be the number one factor in kids' success from whenever they're learning until they move out into the world is grit. It's not about your affluence, it's not about your talent, it's not about how good looking you are. It's more about how much passion you have in a particular topic and how much effort you're willing to put in to make it work. Creative people are great at taking their passion and applying effort to get better at their skill, to progressively increase the ability they have as an artist. But they will put a significantly less amount of passion and effort into the business side of creative work. Hence, this pile right here, without the grit. Maybe they've got a little bit, but they need a lot more. The thing is, is that most of them won't do it, and there are seven reasons why. Okay, reason number one, why you might be a starving artist, and it really is basically what I was saying earlier. You have passion, you have dedication, and you are willing to sacrifice monetary gain in order to further yourself as an artist. There's a common belief with a lot of artists that if they continue to grow themselves as creative people, as they improve their work, the money will come to them because people will start to recognize their genius. But guess what? That's not really going to happen. This isn't Field of Dreams. Just because you made it doesn't mean the people are going to come by it from. Maybe that's not important to you, or you're claiming that it's not important to you so that you can continue holding on to your starving artist badge. The number two reason, and by the way, this is in no particular order, but the perceived value of your work is what is holding you back. One of the most common questions that artists ask is how do I price my work? And it's not because they actually want to find out what their work is worth, it's because they want somebody to tell them what their work is worth. They want somebody else to decide for them because they can't do it themselves because of things like self-doubt and rejection. The problem with that is that you're always relying on somebody else to tell you what you're worth, and that's not how we should be operating. Which takes us to number three, which is external validation and something we all suffer from, especially in the social media age. We want validation for the work that we produced. And sometimes the validation for the work is how much money we make. And what many artists will do, instead of putting it at a price point where it's truly valued at, waiting for the right customer, they will lower the price so they can get it out the door so they can get that dopamine hit of validation that somebody actually wanted to buy it. And what happens if they don't keep selling at that price point? Well, then they lower it again. And then that, in turn, reduces their self-perceived value. Number five, a lot of people will say, is not in their control, and that is limited opportunities. A lot of people will say, well, I don't have a good art community in my city. I don't have a good network of galleries. I don't know anybody in the art industry. But I guarantee you there are thousands of artists out there living in very remote areas that don't have any network whatsoever that are still making a killing on their work because they know where to place the work in order for it to get found. And the reason they know is because they've tried this one, and that one, and this one, and that one, and that one, and this one, and this one, and that one and that one and that one and this one and that one and that one until they found the one that worked for them. They found the network and opportunities through whatever groups that they hang out online. They've found the different people that might be collectors that they can spread the word to with their newsletter. They've reached out to galleries and dealers outside of their purview in order to find people that are willing to take a look at their work. Number six, and that is that an artist has fallen prey to the mindset and beliefs that have kept artists down forever. They hear the phrase starving artist and they automatically believe that that is what it's like to be an artist and that's how you should act and only do that because that is what we are destined for. Mediocrity. They have negative beliefs about financial security, negative beliefs about money in general. They will tell you that money is the root of all evil and they will say to their dying day, if the only purpose behind art is to make money, then I don't want to make art. Scarcity mindset to the extreme. By the way, I think I jumped numbers at some point, but we're continuing on. Next is probably my least favorite of them all and that's when some people might say, well, maybe I should go over here in this other direction so that I can make a little bit of extra money based on the, what other people have said that they can do here and I know I can do that and I might want to do that so that I can make a little bit of cash and their colleagues come over here and say, what's wrong with you, you sellout? I hate this one so much because it's not just the artists themselves. They are feeling the pressure because of something that has happened to them at some point that tells them that they shouldn't strive to do something new, something different. They feel fearful that if they try to do something new and different that isn't aligned with what, they are, what they've been doing so far, that makes them a bad person. I'm just gonna put this one out for the record that if you have ever called somebody a sellout because you didn't like the direction they were taking with their work, 
you're not welcome here. And finally, lack of business knowledge. It's no big secret that most artists are not trying to find more acumen when it comes to business. They're not trying to be corporate raiders. They're not trying to learn more about that stuff. But it's also what might be holding them back because they haven't learned what it takes to run a business. They don't have the knowledge to extend that further to a point where it makes your business viable. Now, for all of those who said, I don't want any part of that. How do I fight back against this, Dave? Well, I'm gonna give you a bunch of different ways that you can go about changing your starving artist mindset into one that is more of a thriving artist mindset, or dare I say, a hungry artist. Number one, diversify your income stream. Instead of just relying solely on selling art, find different ways to make money from the creative work that you're already doing. You could get up on YouTube and start teaching other people what it is you do, or at least sharing what it is you do to a point where maybe you get enough followers that you can start earning income through the YouTube platform. You could also teach through Skillshare or Udemy, or you could offer your own platform to do workshops, create different tools for people to use in their own work, like say digital tools on Procreate or whatnot. You could go the affiliate route where you start a blog or a newsletter or, or vlog and you start pitching affiliate products to the things that you're already using. I know for a fact that there are some artist friendly companies who are willing to give you a little bit of share of revenue whenever you bring somebody in the door through your affiliate link. Number two is a strong online presence and I, I tread on this one a little bit lightly because I'm not necessarily the best at that. I think I'm pretty good here but I wouldn't exactly consider YouTube social media. If you're talking about Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or TikTok wherever it is that you show up, make sure you show up strong, you show up consistent, and you interact with your people. Number three, network with actual people in other places like events, like art shows, and art fairs, and art places. Wherever people go that look at art stuff, meet people, find new friends, meet collectors, maybe meet some dealers or art gallery owners, and who knows, maybe you'll be the next Damien Hurst. Not probable but it could happen. Number four, price your art realistically. Now I know that kind of goes a little bit against what I just said, but listen, if you are gonna price your art way up here and your buyers are not anywhere close to that right now, then you aren't gonna sell. Maybe you can come down here and be equal to other people that are doing similar type of work. You have to go find where those people are actually selling at the top price point. In other words, don't go to Etsy. Going to Etsy to look for competitive prices is a race to the bottom. Go to satyart.com, go to artsy.com, go, go find one of these other websites where people are selling work at a reasonable value, then price your work accordingly. Number five, develop your business skills. Go learn about marketing, go learn about sales, go learn about promotion, start small. You don't have to take in the encyclopedia of all the business knowledge all at once. In order to help you out a little bit, I'm going to make a list in the description of some of the books that I feel are a good start. Pick one, read that one, then go back and read the next, and then go back and read the next. Number six, seek art grants and residencies. Now, if you're not familiar with residencies, it's basically you become an artist in residence in a particular place. They're willing to give you the space, and maybe they have meals and food and place for you to stay. Sometimes it's just a place to do artwork in a new place so you get recognized by people you've never met before. And Art Grants is basically just government institutions or financial institutions or you know private companies that are willing to give you money just because you made cool stuff, but you have to go you know jump through the hoops of getting that done. And sometimes that can be difficult, which is why a lot of people don't do it. Number eight is leverage online fundraising. Whether it's P Patreon, Kickstarter, GoFundMe, you have a project or a thing that you're focused on that you want to make, and those people come in to support that thing. Now, Patreon's a little bit different. People say, I want to support you on a regular basis, and they pay you a certain amount every month. It's not huge money at first, but if you start to build up your equity with these people, then over time and you know sharing with other things, and then you, you can get more people in, and who knows? I mean, there's some artists that are making really big money just from sites like Patreon or Kickstarter or Crowdfunder options. God, I did it again. I forgot what number I'm on. Let's say focus on niche opportunities because there might be something that you're kind of into that you feel like you might be able to do well. That group is very passionate about the things that are involved in whatever it is they're passionate about. You can cater your art to that, cater a specific product to that, create a limited edition line of art prints or whatever, just for that niche. My good friend Stephanie Hahn is very much into cats and every once in a while she'll do like a whole thing of cat pictures and cat portraits, cat paintings. And then she takes some of that money and she donates it to organizations that help animals like stray cats and things like that. Not only does it help her get paid, but it gets her noticed by people who like cats and it gets her noticed by the institutions that she contributes to. Next, continuously innovate and improve. Now let's go back to the very beginning 
where we talked about how artists are good at this. You need to keep developing. You need to keep growing. You need to keep sharing. That's the key. Keep putting it out there. Keep telling everybody how you're growing and what you're doing and what you're doing to improve what you're making and how it's been better than last time. That way you're getting all the attention of other people who want to be involved in that. You are obviously gaining from it because you're getting better. And then hopefully other people, outside entities are noticing. Maybe they're bringing you in to whatever magazine they might share, whatever blog, whatever newsletter. Maybe you're getting into The Hungry Artist could happen. Keep growing, keep making, keep continuing to make great work, but don't forget about all this other stuff. And finally, stop underestimating your worth because you are definitely worth more than what you're thinking. There's this concept called the belief cycle that was created by Tony Robbins and it kind of goes like this. The beliefs that you have create the potential in your life and the potential creates new actions in your life and actions create results which triggers new beliefs, which triggers new potential, which triggers new action and results and so on and so on and so on. But here's the kicker. Negative beliefs trigger negative potential, negative action, negative results. Positive beliefs trigger positive potential, positive actions, positive results. You can be the greatest painter, illustrator, photographer, sculptor of all time, but if you are not believing in yourself, if you're not putting the potential into your belief, or from your beliefs into actions and then creating results to create those new beliefs, then you are not gonna go anywhere. You're just going to stay right exactly where you are. We have to start working on ourselves and it starts working by learning new things and keep practicing and pushing forward and having grit and sticking to the things and believing that we have the potential to do great things. That is all tremendous amount of stuff to take in at once. I don't want you believing that you have to do it all right now. In fact, it's all about just taking tiny steps forward, taking a little bit more grit every single day and dropping it into the work and dropping it into our mindset so that we can create new opportunities for ourselves. And if you wanna start somewhere, you can start with that video right there. Thanks very much, guys. I've been Dave, you've been awesome. Go leave a comment, hit the like button. I'll see you next time.